In the autumn of 1951, the communist Chinese government in Beiping decided it was time to take action against a group they had long feared and hated, the American Protestant missionaries. As one of their first targets, they chose the Reverend John Hayes, professor of English at the Chinese National Teachers College of Guayan and dean of all American pedagogues in the country. You die now, John Hayes. Oh! Why are you silent, man? Why do you lower your eyes at the sight of an enemy of the people? Being taken to pay for his crimes. <laughs> Look at him! The criminal John Hayes! The imperialist spy! Look at his bound hands, and his nakedness. See how he has lost face? Dogs. Dogs! You do not deserve the benefits the people's party has brought you. He has their sympathy. But he won't have their sympathy when they hear the confession of his crimes from his own lips. But uh, Hayes is not an ordinary man. He will be difficult. Why do you think I came from Beijing? I enjoy dealing with difficult men. Especially Americans. However, I will permit you to conduct the preliminary investigations. Thank you. Thank you, Comrade Chernik. For three months following Hayes' arrest, he was confined to a tiny cell designed to be a torture in itself. Time came to have no shape nor form for Hayes. He was not permitted to know the definition between day and night. He was left completely alone, except for the eyes, which studied his every movement. He was not permitted to sleep, and he was fed the minimum necessary to sustain life. This was to break down his physical resistance. There is no mystery about the process that has come to be termed brainwashing. It is based on simple fundamentals known for a thousand years. Once the physical will to resist has been reduced to the lowest ebb, the mind is subjected to the same relentless erosion until the subject is reduced to such mental confusion that he cannot differentiate between the conscious and the subconscious, between fantasy and reality. You are an imperialistic spy. You are Admit you wrote letters to America telling about our country. China's been my home all my life. If I wrote letters to the United States, I did nothing but to explain the position of the Chinese people. But you admit writing the letters? Yes. Now admit you knew it was against the law to write to the United States. Is it against the law to write letters to Russia? Repeat after me. I wrote letters to the United States. Actually, I will admit that. I wrote letters to the United States, but not to... Repeat it again. I wrote letters to the United States. I wrote letters to the United States. Once more, I wrote letters to the United States. Admit it. Repeat after me. I wrote letters to the United States. 
I wrote letters to the United States. I wrote letters to the United States. I wrote letters to the United States. Write it in your own words. That you regret your error. That you now see the light. That you are sorry for the damage you have done. That you now endorse the principles of communism and the Chinese people's government. That you wish to atone for your crime. I have committed no crime. Write it in your own words. That you have been deceived by the false leaders of Wall Street warmongers. I've had no sleep. I can't think or feel. You may sleep after you have written. Right. I wish to atone for my crimes against the Chinese people. Right. I wish to atone. 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 I cannot tell you how grieved I am to see a man of your stature in such a pitiful state. But you have no one to blame but yourself. Why do you insist on torturing yourself by not cooperating? There is no co compromise with evil. At least not for me. I didn't come to debate with you. <laughs> no, I have too much respect for the quality of your mind. In fact, I came here to save your mind for the benefit of the People's Republic of China. In what way? We ask you to sign a simple document. Confessing that my whole life and the life of my father has been a lie? No. I have full power to dispose of your case. I take you to Pei Bing. It's the honored guest of the government. You're going to be maintained at government expense, and you're going to be named a member of the People's Educational Division of, for the whole China. What is your answer, Professor? I'm thinking of an answer made by another man in the face of temptation. Get thee behind me, Satan. The officer in charge of the preliminary investigation told me that you are almost ready to face the people's court. I cannot remember that any man brought before that court has not confessed or been condemned to death. I have no fear of death. And I will not confess. We shall see. Goodbye, John Hayes. After months of confinement, the Chinese interrogators of John Hayes considered that he was properly conditioned to be put on trial. Get back! You cannot go in! No one is admitted to the court. Sit down. Get up! You dare sit without the permission of the court? Stand up, insolent Yankee! Now you may sit down. You are smiling, prisoner. Do you find your position amusing? Forgive me, Wang Tzu. Do not foul my name by daring to speak it! Address me as the President of the People's Court. Forgive me, Mr. President of the People's Court. But I am remembering a thought which came to me last night. What thoughts could you have that we do not already know? 
It was at a moment when I almost doubted I would have the strength to face this court today. When I prayed for guidance and courage, suddenly it was revealed to me that I am the prisoner of small boys, the kind of boys that I have taught over the years. You dare to call the judges of the people's court boys? Bigger and stronger, perhaps, and certainly more dangerous, but boys for all that. And I gave thanks, because I knew then that I could face this court, just as I have faced countless boys in countless classrooms as a teacher. You are aware of the nature of the charges against you. I am at a complete loss. You have put traitorous thoughts in the minds of your pupils. Never. You have posed as a Christian missionary teacher. But you are a foreign agent. One, two. I beg pardon. Mr. President of the People's Court. You have known me personally for 20 years. You have been a guest in my home. On your honor, do you accuse me of being an enemy of China? I am not here to answer your questions. You are a member of the American Presbyterian Board of Foreign Missions. Are you not? Yes. Your J. Edgar Hoover is a trustee of the same Presbyterian Board of Foreign Missions. Is he not? Yes. Then you admit your guilt. The head of your FBI is your employer. You are an FBI agent. You are an American spy. False. Mr. Hoover is a member of the Board of Foreign Missions of my church as an individual, not as an official of the American government. Confess that you have written reports concerning military matters to your FBI spy chief. You know that I am not a spy? I know that you are an imperialist spy. Who strides across China today as her lord and master? Who has already torn away from China the provinces of Manchuria and Outer Mongolia? Who has conquered and occupied Tibet and overthrown the Dalai Lama? Who dominates China today as she has never been dominated before, even during the Manchu conquest? And whose picture is that? In the place of honor, over the bench of the Chinese People's Court, it is a picture of Stalin. Even in your own court, Mao holds a lesser place. Therefore, in the China of today, I could not be an imperialistic spy, because I am not a Russian. Take him out! Some men, in the face of adversity, can draw strength and courage from within themselves, can confound even the most cunning and implacable of other men. John Hayes found strength in his faith and in truth. support the Nationalist Party of the renegade Chiang Kai-shek, who has the support of the warmongering American government. I have no connection with the Chinese Nationalist Party, nor with Generalism or Chiang Kai-shek. You lie again, John Hayes. You publicly read the funeral services over the body of a man who was head of the Nationalist Party at Kuiang, after this court had condemned him as a traitor and ordered him to death. Yes. Yes, I did that. He was a member of my church, and I am an ordained minister. And by officiating at his funeral service, you gave aid and sympathy to the nationalist conspirators. I should like to repeat the prayer spoken over the grave by the young daughter of the man condemned to death by this court. Heavenly Father, Forgive the judges of the people's court. 
Give those judges, I pray, a real understanding of justice. True love for the Chinese people. So that true peace may come to this poor land. That man was your friend. Just as I was your friend. You claim to be a friend of China. Yet you are one of the American capitalist teachers who has corrupted and enslaved our people for years with your Wall Street teachings. Need I remind you of the labors of love performed by my father for the Chinese people until the day of his death? Need I mention the hospitals he built for the poor? His work for the improvement of farms his suffering to save lives in the time of plague and famine, his founding of schools for the sons and daughters of the people. Let me be heard. John Cage is no enemy of the Chinese people. Arrest that woman. Take the names of those persons with her. Are you afraid to hear me? There will be no further demonstrations. Such a situation must be handled by force. Just a society, in spite of your teachings of brotherly love, can be changed for the better only by the use of force. Force? Just as no man can hope to win friends, sympathy, or respect by causing the hatred of his fellow men, just as surely no nation can hope to win friends, aid, and understanding by incurring the hatred and contempt of her sister nations. Yes, teacher. Then what would you have us do? Give up the friendship of Russia and bow to the United States? Since you ask me the question, I will answer it. I would have China civilize Russia and then have China become the bridge between the Eastern and Western worlds. China has the power and intelligence to do that. If only China will maintain her independence to do that. But China, at the moment, has abandoned her age-old concept of decency, morality, and good to follow after the false prophets who are using China as a cat's paw for their own sordid ends. Take him up! Silence him! It is possible to silence me, but not the truth of what I have said. you have sought to overthrow the people's democracy. Mr. President of the People's Court, what is a democracy? China is a democracy. Is it? In a democracy, the people rule themselves and elect their own officials. Will you name me the officials of the present Chinese government who have been elected by the people? I have been lenient with you. In a democracy, the people are guaranteed certain rights. Freedom of thought, of the press, of the inherent dignity of the individual. But above all, to be secure in his person and in his home. You will not lecture this court. Are you secure in your person? Are you secure in your home? Or do you wonder when the knock will come in the dead of the night? at your door. In a democracy, there is justice. But in the China of today, there are only orders. Orders from the Kremlin. You think you are sitting in judgment on John Hayes? The truth is that the world at this moment is sitting in judgment on you and on this court. It is not John Hayes on trial. It is the honor and independence of China. Take him out! We've heard enough.
such a man is dangerous. He must be disposed of at once. We will not need a signed statement, nor a confession from you. Before the court, you have convicted yourself over and over. I spoke the truth, as it has been given me to know the truth. sooner than I thought. The verdict of the court. You are ordered to be expelled from China immediately. You were given the task to rid China of that man, John Hayes. But we did do just that, Comrade Commissar. Yes. You sent him on his way to Hong Kong as a conquering hero, not before a firing squad as a convicted criminal. But we considered the international aspects of his case, the fact that he had the sympathy and the friendship of the people. Your duty was to convict, to consider only that. If we had condemned him to death, we would have made him a martyr. Is such stupidity possible, even to you? You still do not realize what has taken place in your court. You and the agents of the People's Court were entrusted with the important assignment of the brainwashing of John Hayes. I read the transcript of his trial. He used your court as a sounding board to echo the things in which he believes. He, John Hayes, brainwashed you, all of you. Comrade Commissar. Now you understand, there's no place in the people's government for stupid, bungling officials. Captain. Is this then our reward for serving you? Do you expect to be rewarded for betraying your party? It is John Hayes I betrayed. He was my friend and he spoke the truth and I would not listen. For this I deserve to die and I will die willingly. But not for you and your party. You have betrayed our country. You are destroying China and someday you will pay more heavily than I am paying. No. Get rid of them. Yes, Comrade Commissar. Two days later, John Hayes was on his way to Hong Kong, bound for the United States. He was painfully saddened at the prospect of leaving this country which he loved so dearly. He felt it was the last he should see of it. And then something occurred that made him feel differently. He passed a woman who stopped to wish him safe journey. With her was her son, who raised a grimy thumb and piped, America top! He knew then that all was not lost. For as Christians think, so in the end must their captors.